Bianca Devins was an up-and-coming Instagram celebrity who gained quite a sizable following online. She made many friends and fans on social media, but one friend in particular seemed to have been much more interested in Bianca than anyone realized. While Bianca and her newfound friend seemingly cared for each other and did everything together, investigators would soon learn that he had an ulterior motive, one that detectives never saw coming, and one that would cost Bianca her life and lead to one seriously twisted crime scene. If you're in a relationship with someone, whether you're married or dating, it's best to check in with one another from time to time to make sure everyone's needs are being met, and to be sure that you're on the same page. This is where Paired steps in. Paired is an incredible app that can help you improve communication, stay connected to your partner, and deepen your intimacy as a couple. Most importantly, Paired was designed to help you improve the happiness of your relationships, and it does a wonderful job. You can explore fun games, quizzes, and even receive expert guidance to help strengthen your relationships and overcome your struggles or shortcomings. Paired is a fun and easy way to regain control of your relationships, and it's suitable for all couples in any stage of your relationship. My wife and I have been trying Paired out recently, and I'll admit it's actually quite fun. We've been together for over a decade, but still managed to discover some new things about one another. The games and daily conversations are a welcome change of pace from your typical relationship apps that may seem a bit boring or just plain dull. Paired is truly fun every step of the way, especially the new game called You or Me that was just added to the app. That game in particular is a blast. Click my link below and get 25% off a Paired Premium membership so you can strengthen and deepen your connection with your partner. Thanks to Paired for supporting today's video. Bianca Devins was a self-described fake internet girl who had gathered quite a following on Instagram. But Bianca was also a very real person, something we all may tend to forget from time to time when keeping tabs on some of our favorite social media stars. Bianca seems to have been focused on attempting to make a career out of being a social media influencer, and she was certainly on her way to making these dreams a reality. I can't say for sure just how large of a following that she had, but her account currently sits at just under 150,000 followers, so I'm sure many of these followers found her account after the crime took place, but more on that in just a moment. Being just 17 years old, Bianca had a good head on her shoulders for her age. She was incredibly talented as an artist, and this shows in many of her more expressionistic Instagram posts. Bianca wasn't a so-called e-girl in the traditional sense of the word. Rather than posting provocative photos like many people do these days, she would pose for more artistic shots, often adding in captions or other images alongside herself, making her posts more of a modern art form than anything else. While Bianca focused heavily on her potential career online, she also took the proper steps to ensure that she'd have a successful life in case social media didn't pan out. Bianca was a remarkably bright girl, and her family says that she took pride in her efforts to help others. A former online friend spoke about Bianca and remembered that she always was willing to help those around her, even if she was going through some dark situations in her own life. Bianca had made plans to study psychology at Mohawk Valley College in Utica, New York. She doesn't appear to have decided on what she planned to do with this degree just yet, but I would imagine she would have been involved in counseling or some sort of therapy if I had to guess, but we really don't know for sure. While Bianca presented herself online as a powerful and willful girl, she had some pretty serious struggles that she had to deal with on a daily basis for a number of years. I'm sure most of us are aware that being a teenager is incredibly hard, and many teens end up battling depression at some point. But for Bianca, her struggles were much deeper than anything many of us would have ever had to deal with. Her family spoke about her teenage years and recalled that Bianca had been battling serious bouts of depression for a number of years. Not only this, but she also had to deal with crippling anxiety and a diagnosis of borderline personality disorder. Now, I don't know really anything about BPD, so I'm certainly not going to try to give any real detail to try to describe the disorder, but I know that a large number of people often struggle with BPD, and many of them are teenagers. The only thing I can say for sure about BPD is that it often leads to a disturbingly warped sense of reality and dramatically heightened emotions. And it's been said that up to 10% of people who suffer with BPD will end up taking their own life before finding a suitable form of treatment. 
If this weren't bad enough, Bianca would also be treated for PTSD, but we don't know for sure what may have led to all these troubles. Bianca's loved ones say that because of all these struggles, she found herself in and out of mental hospitals all throughout her teenage years. Bianca was seriously having a hard time, and she did everything she could to keep her health troubles at bay, but she'd often lose these battles and be forced to spend additional time in various hospitals for treatment. With all of the issues that she faced in her day-to-day -day life, it's no surprise that Bianca found refuge in online communities, particularly 4chan and Discord. And who can blame her? Many of these forums that she became a part of prided themselves on the anonymity that they offered meaning that Bianca could be whoever she wanted to be without feeling judged for the troubles that she faced on the daily. Bianca found a great number of friends online, but she also made more than a few enemies. According to a newspaper article, while Bianca loved to hide away on the internet, she found herself being harassed by perverted men on multiple occasions, and these men would go to great lengths to lure Bianca in to do, well, whatever they wanted her to do. There's really no telling with some of the creeps on the internet these days. They could have been harassing her for photos of her armpits or something for all we know. Now, I say that as a joke, but seriously, if you have teenage kids, keep a close eye on the people that they talk to online. One thing can lead to another very quickly, and Bianca was about to learn this in the worst possible way. One of the men that Bianca had been speaking with online went by the name of Brandon Clark. Brandon was a bit of a troubled child. While details of his childhood and upbringing haven't really been shared publicly, we do know that he had to deal with a lot of trauma in his younger years, much like Bianca. He recalled one particular incident where he witnessed his father using a weapon to hold his mother hostage for several hours. Thankfully, the situation seems to have cleared itself up, but this did a great deal of damage to Brandon considering he was so young at the time. As time passed by, Brandon was able to hold himself together, but he always had troubles and triggers that would send him into fits of rage, paranoia, or worse. While he was able to live a normal life, he'd been battling demons for as long as he could remember, and that's probably why Brandon and Bianca hit it off so well. It's believed by many that Bianca and Brandon met on Instagram sometime in the spring of 2019. He began following Bianca because he enjoyed her posts, but he soon began privately messaging her as well. Bianca thought that he seemed like a perfectly nice guy, so she even messaged him back. Eventually, their relationship blossomed into a real-world friendship, but that's the problem. See, Bianca was just 17 at the time, and Brandon was 21. But this didn't matter to Brandon. While he loved being friends with Bianca, for him, that simply wasn't enough. While their relationship wasn't illegal per se, considering the age of consent in New York is 17, their relationship certainly turned a few heads. Brandon had expressed his romantic feelings for Bianca several times, but Bianca quickly set him straight, explaining that she wasn't interested in becoming anything more than friends. She felt that the two had a lot in common and they were both able to get a lot out of their friendship, but Brandon just wasn't able to let it go. But here's where things get a bit confusing. According to investigators, they have evidence to suggest that Bianca was, quote, personally intimate with Brandon. Now, your guess is as good as mine as far as what that means, but to me, this suggests that they have reason to believe that the relationship was of a private, consensual nature. I could be wrong about that, but that's the implication as far as I can tell. But Bianca's mother refutes these claims, saying that she'd spoken with Bianca about Brandon on several occasions, and Bianca had assured her that the relationship was nothing more than friendly. But let's be real for a minute. If you were 17 and you were having relations with someone who was 21, would you really tell your parents? Now, I don't know the dynamic of Bianca's relationship with her mother, and I'm certainly not suggesting that Bianca was lying to her mom. I don't know this family at all. The only point I'd like to make here is that it's entirely possible that her mother wasn't aware of the full nature of this relationship. Now, I may seem way out of line to even suggest such a thing, considering Bianca was a minor, but the reason I've come to this conclusion that Bianca wasn't being entirely open with her mother is because one of Bianca's mother's close friends claims that she feared that Brandon was manipulating Bianca. The friend claims that Brandon would get Bianca high and then coerce her into sexual encounters. So if this family friend had reason to believe that Bianca and Brandon were intimately involved with one another and detectives claim the same thing, well, I don't think it would be too much of a stretch to assume that they were intimately involved. But we still need to treat this idea as nothing more than a rumor since it can't be proven. 
But the real kicker here is that, in all honesty, regardless of the details of Bianca's relationship with Brandon, one thing is certain. She was not interested in him when it came to a serious or even long-term relationship. While they may have been slightly more than friends, she didn't plan on things going any further than that. But Brandon was a very jealous man, and Bianca was a young girl who turned quite a few heads. And unfortunately, this would lead to a dramatic fallout in their relationship, and one that Bianca wouldn't recover from. It was July of 2019. Over the last couple of weeks, Bianca had been speaking with her mother about attending a concert in Queens. A gothic folk singer that Bianca was extremely interested in was coming to town and Bianca wanted more than anything to be there. Bianca's mother was extremely nervous about letting her daughter go to a concert unattended, but she soon learned that Brandon would be there as well. Bianca's mother loved Brandon, he seemed like a very clean-cut guy, and she felt much better about letting Bianca go to the concert after learning that he would be going with her. Now, to be clear, her mom still didn't want her to go, but in her mom's own words, Bianca was nearly 18 and she knew that she would go whether she said yes or not. When the night of the concert came, Bianca couldn't contain her excitement. She'd spent the majority of the evening trying on various outfits and asking for her mother's feedback. She finally decided on a black tank top with a black and white skirt. It was around this time that Bianca's mother learned about another person who'd be going with the two to the concert, a young man named Alex that Bianca had met on Discord. We don't know Alex's age, but we know that he lived somewhat close by, and Bianca thought that this concert would be a great way for the two to meet up for the first time. Bianca eventually left home with Brandon and met up with Alex a short while later. According to various reports about the meetup, Bianca appears to have been romantically interested in Alex, even though she had told her mother that she wanted to remain single so that she wouldn't be tied down when she left home to attend college in a few months. But for whatever reason, Bianca appears to have been taken aback by Alex. The two had so much in common, and Alex was an incredibly sweet and caring young man. The two had chatted for hours upon hours online, talking about anything and everything. Bianca felt that the two had been friends for years, even though they'd only known each other for a matter of weeks, as far as I can tell. This relationship only continued and strengthened once they met in person, and Bianca seems to have been falling head over heels for Alex, and the two ended up kissing at a nearby store in Queens. As you could imagine, this kiss angered Brandon greatly. Brandon, being somewhat possessive, felt betrayed by Bianca. After all, she'd no sooner told Brandon that she wasn't interested in anything serious when she, in his eyes, then turned around and began pursuing someone else. Brandon was devastated, to say the least. Bianca insisted to Brandon that this was nothing more than a friendly kiss, but Brandon can sense that something more was going on here. Nevertheless, it appears as though the three attended the concert together anyway, but Brandon kept a much closer eye on Bianca after this. Bianca had been checking in with her mother all throughout the evening, and her final text rang through at about 7.30 p.m. when the three were looking for a parking spot at the show. After this, her mother was left completely in the dark. When her mother hadn't heard back from them by about 1.45 the following morning, she became a bit concerned, but she assumed that Brandon and Bianca had pulled over somewhere to sleep before attempting to drive home after dark. Unfortunately, this wasn't true. By 7 a.m. that morning, Bianca's sister Olivia heard a knock at the door. She answered and was shocked to find that it was the police, and they wanted to talk about Bianca. When prosecutors arrived at Bianca's home, they weren't there because Bianca had gotten into trouble or had been arrested. Instead, they arrived with the worst news a parrot could ever imagine. Bianca's life had been stolen from her, and if this weren't bad enough, it was taken by a trusted family friend. While Brandon may have given outward appearances of being a very calm and collected young man, he wasn't, by any stretch of the imagination. The two had argued about Bianca's kiss with Alex for hours after the concert had let out. While Bianca thought it was nothing more than a misunderstanding, Brandon perceived this as a direct violation of his trust, and he wasn't going to stand for it. Brandon truly believed that he loved Bianca, and he would have done anything to have had her love him back, but if he couldn't have Bianca, no one could. While the two were in the midst of a heated disagreement in Brandon's car, Brandon pulled out a knife that he had hidden in his car earlier and claimed Bianca's life with one swift movement. For reasons that remain unclear, Brandon appears to have been under the assumption or the delusion that he and Bianca were dating, even though she had allegedly made it painfully obvious that she was uninterested. 
We know that this is the case because Brandon actually called the police himself and confessed to the crime. But rather than admitting that he had taken the life of his closest friend, he phoned 911 and said, quote, I just killed my girlfriend. But here's where things get disturbing, confusing, and just plain dark. On that fateful evening, Brandon revealed that not only was he battling some serious issues, but he was truly a sick and disturbed man. Before he even bothered calling 911, Brandon had actually taken photos with Bianca's body, posed with her body, and then shared these images all over social media. If this weren't bad enough, these photos spread like wildfire, but it gets even worse from here. Considering Bianca was an up-and-coming Instagram celebrity, these photos eventually made their way to Instagram, and soon enough, the photos had been sent to the inboxes of Bianca's family members. These images were sent to Bianca's mother multiple times, with her mother opening the messages before she could realize what they contained, blindsiding her with the most awful images of her child that anyone could ever witness. These images were sent alongside hurtful and untrue statements, with some users claiming that Bianca got what she deserved, with some even saying that Bianca was sleeping around with various people and that she had it coming. But this statement is an outright lie. When detectives dug into the situation further, they learned that Brandon had first posted the images to one of Bianca's regular Discord servers that she was known to frequent. He posted the image alongside an expletive-laced comment saying that her fans would need to find someone else to follow now that Bianca had been dealt with. Detectives have even suggested that Brandon filmed himself committing the crime, and it's rumored that this video is floating around on the internet as well, but to tell you the truth, this isn't an allegation that I'm willing to dig into because some videos are better left unseen. So if you're curious about the validity of these claims, I'll let you do the digging on your own. When police arrived at the scene of the crime following Brandon's phone call and his confession, he turned the weapon on himself and attempted to take his own life, but thankfully first responders were able to administer aid in order to keep him alive long enough to stand trial. In the end, Brandon made a full recovery. Investigators say that they have every reason to believe that not only did Brandon take Bianca's life out of jealousy, but they believe he also did it for the fame, as they found a note left behind at the scene of the crime that was written by Brandon, reading, May you never forget me. Worse yet, the crime may have even been premeditated, and the kiss may not have actually been what provoked Brandon. He may have planned on committing the crime from the very beginning. Police claim that they have more than enough evidence to suggest that Brandon had been planning the crime for quite some time. If you remember, the weapon that Brandon had used to commit the crime had been stashed away in his car ahead of time, presumably long before Bianca's kiss with Alex. Brandon had also spent several days googling information about the location of the carotid artery online, as well as how to incapacitate someone. By all means, it seems as though Brandon had every intention of claiming Bianca's life for weeks in advance, but in the end, he was only sentenced to prison for second-degree murder, presumably due to a lack of irrefutable evidence. But thankfully, Brandon was given life in prison with the possibility of parole after 25 years. But if we're being honest, I think we all know that this man will never see the light of day again. In the aftermath of the crime, Bianca's crime scene photos were popping up all over the internet. Her family were forced to not only live through the tragic and heartbreaking loss of their loved one, but every time they opened social media, they were greeted with more disturbing images of their family member. One of Bianca's friends recalled a time when someone had forwarded the photo to her. The friend had flagged the photo and reported it to Instagram so that it could get removed. But get this, she got a message back from Instagram the following morning saying that the image didn't violate their terms of service, and thus it wouldn't be taken down. This happened on more than one occasion as well. Some of Bianca's family members said that they continued to receive these images in their inboxes for more than two years after Bianca had lost her life. With her family essentially being unable to do anything to drown out these disturbing photos, fans of Bianca came up with a different idea. Her followers all worked together to begin sharing photos of pink clouds in Bianca's honor. The idea here seems to have been to snuff out the images of Bianca's crime scene with images of peaceful pink clouds, and this movement certainly worked to a certain extent. For Bianca's family, though, the damage had already been done. Bianca's mother says that she doesn't feel as though she can close her eyes without seeing the awful, disgusting final images of her daughter. Worse yet, she found out that the Oneida District Attorney's Office also leaked private images and videos of Bianca to the press. So now these videos are circulating around on the internet as well. 
These images supposedly came from Bianca's private phone, and when investigators and detectives searched the phone during the investigation, these images were uploaded to a database shared by multiple law agencies, then eventually leaked to the public somehow. Without getting into too much detail, all I can really say is that these photos and videos, well, they're disturbing and highly illegal, as Bianca was underage. That should tell you all that you need to know. Bianca's family has since pressed charges, but as of now, the case hasn't been settled. This story is just disgusting from beginning to end. From Bianca's mental health issues, to the actions of her close friend, to the mishandling of her case by the district attorney's office, everything about this case is just tragic. Bianca's family will still be battling court cases for many years to come, but maybe on some level, the incarceration of Brandon will help bring them some form of peace knowing that the man that ruined their lives will now be locked away forever. At trial, Brandon certainly did show signs of remorse, but whether these feelings were genuine or all for show remains to be seen. All we can hope for now is that Brandon never gets to live his life in the free world ever again. Thank you guys for tuning in to another episode of True Crime Stories. If you want to see more true crime documentaries like this, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe. If you'd like to help support the channel, the best way you can do that is simply by leaving a comment below, any comment at all. It helps out the channel a lot more than you may realize. If you want to help out financially, you can do that by clicking the blue join button below or by picking up a True Crime Stories mug from tynots.com. But with that, my name is Ty Knotts, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.